We've arrived in our next destination in the midst of a thunderstorm. At first glance, Taiwan is all lights, industry and action. But we can already sense that there is much more to this place than first impressions reveal. So the storm has almost cleared since our arrival last night and I'm starting off my journey in Taiwan with a visit to the Nangang Exhibition Hall. It's the biggest exhibition hall in all of Taiwan and I'm meeting someone called Jasmine Tu who's going to show us around, tell us all about the meeting facilities here and why the place is just so green. Good morning, welcome to Nangang Exhibition Hall. Thank you for showing us around. No problem. I'm excited to see this space. It's the biggest in Taiwan? Yes, it's so far the biggest indoor um, exhibition area in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, the show, um, show ground of the exhibition area is around 45,000 square meters. You can see we have an exhibition actually setting up right now. The show ground can be divided into three major areas, including area I, J, and K located at the ground floor. And uh, the ceiling height in this area is nine meters, nine meters. And the um, floor um, capacity of weight is around five tons per square meters. So it's very suitable for all different kinds of heavy machine trade shows. Great. And also um, to follow the eco-friendly idea of, this, of our exhibition hall, we use a very special material for the concrete floor. It's much more beautiful when you are using the carpet and it's much more um, nicer to our earth as well. Excellent. Oh, I like to hear that. And that's important for delegates these days because being green exactly. at conferences and meetings are important. So if you're an exhibition hall that can advise them, yeah. that makes things a little bit easier. Okay. So welcome to the fourth floor of our exhibition hall. As you can see on the map over here, it can also be divided into three major areas, mm -hmm. L, M and N. And usually um, when the concerts are holding here inside the exhibition hall, um, in one area they can accommodate at least 6,000 people. Wow. 6, you mentioned Avril Lavigne is on here tonight? Yes, actually um, right now we're going to see the stages um, constructing right now. <gasps> And also you can see from here, we have some light stream right in through this building. This is part of our um, green policies inside the Tell me a little bit more about that. I know we talked downstairs, you have not only the three ores, but you have the three greens now. Yes. What are they? The, um, the three Gs are actually green building, green transportations, and green energies. So um, this whole pavilion is actually a licensed green building from our government. To be a green building, you not only have to blend it into the modern natures, but also making use a lot of the green energies in 3Gs. So um, on the roof, we have some facilities that can actually collect the rainwaters. And after purifying those rainwaters, we will use it in the toilets. You were telling me actually something really interesting about how when there's not an event on in the exhibition hall, you only use a quarter of the electricity? Yes, um, it's also saving money for us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also important, on a side note. <laughs> This is a beautiful place called the Light Garage. Okay. And this is a popular place for um, all the organizers for exhibitions to hold a cocktail parties. And they can accommodate around 150 to 200 people. What, what sculpture is that? You see the place between the two fingers. Oh, I do, yes, yeah. That place is actually resembling the Nangang Exhibition Hall. We are a platform for all the buyers and visitors to exchange their um, opinions and feelings about your industry or whether or either for Taiwan. I so. really like that idea. Oh, that's <laughs> so really we're unique. Actually a platform for all different for kinds anybody, of stuff. I really like that. It fits in with everybody. It doesn't matter what industry yeah. you're in, it's totally relevant. Exactly. I like it. <laughs> Our journey took us briefly past the National Palace Museum, an important monument to Chinese history and a must-see for all visitors to Taipei. But we made our stop at the Hao Shan 1914 Creative Park, where arts, dance, literature and creativity sit alongside a virtual version of the exhibits on offer at the museum. I really like the idea of this gallery, you know, it being all interactive and digital so you can come and see what is in that Palace Museum. Yes. It's a really great idea to get people interested in the paintings of the artwork that's in the museum. So it changes. So it's Taiwan, New York, yeah. and this one is Paris. Paris. Ah! 
That's really cool. Interactive artwork. That one's similar. That means large. Oh, just that one character means large. That's so interesting. Can I try another one? Oh. What does that mean? It used to mean that you tied the sticks together. They look similar as it goes along. Wow. The Creative Park, which is located inside a stunning old winery, also has event space for up to 1,000 people. Heading further out of Taipei into the lush green mountains, a break in the rain allowed us a dry arrival at the Xi'an Culture Restaurant. This is Taiwanese dining at its most romantic. Able to take up to 200 people, this exclusive restaurant must be booked weeks in advance. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Some kind of sprouts. Lemongrass, is it? So what's on top of the rice here? Mmm, that's a yummy pumpkin. <laughs> I'm going to eat the unknown leaf now. <laughs> It's quite sharp, but it's, it's actually really nice. So what is this? Is this a cucumber? That's gorgeous. It's a type of flower inside the rice cake. <laughs> so my chopstick skills are not great. <laughs> I'm gonna place my next dish exactly over it, so it's fine. Gorgeous how it opens up completely. That was really tasty, besides my little spill. <laughs> We've just finished a really lovely lunch in the restaurant and then we took a walk around absolutely stunning gardens here. We're finishing up the afternoon with tea with the owner here. Mr. Ling, he's going to show us a traditional tea ceremony. Despite the rain, we couldn't have arrived in Taiwan at a better time, only days after the latest ICA rankings were unveiled. To hear more about Taiwan's growing success as a meeting destination, I met with Wen Zhou Kiang from the Taiwanese government. The grants given to the companies or the NGOs or the organizers can be categorized in three groups. The first one uh, is to uh, help them for bidding uh, conventions to come to Taiwan. And the second is uh, when they were succeeded in bidding, then they have to promote the events. And when the convention is actually held in Taiwan in the implementation stage, we also have given them some support in grant. And in your experience, what kind of resources from the government are considered beneficial for meeting planners? The uh, resources provided by the government uh, ranges uh, very widely giving sponsorship for admission to tourist attractions. We will be trying very hard to talk with different agencies that will be willing to open up their places. We also help in visa uh, facilitation. For groups that have booked their programs into Taiwan, what are the main reasons that they're choosing this country as opposed to other destinations? We are very strong in certain sectors, and I think that helps to um, attract some type of specific conventions to be held in Taiwan, medicine or even to high technology. And this is a way that we're also working closely with related agencies or even NGOs to attract because we want to be more specific to find a niche in which to have such kind of conventions to be held in Taiwan. 
I had a super foot massage last night, which made me sleep like an absolute baby. So even the pouring rain this morning isn't gonna deter me from the things that I can do in Taipei. First stop is the Din Tai Fun restaurant where I'm gonna do a cookery class. I'm gonna be making Zao Lan Bao, which is literally dumplings made with steaming pork. Hello. Hello. One of Asia's most popular restaurants, Din Tai Fung, has branches in nine other Asian cities, as well as in LA and Sydney. With this being the flagship restaurant, visitors queued from before breakfast to taste the delicious food on offer here. So even more pressure on me to do well in the kitchen. Wow. This is what I'm going to be making? Our most famous one, juicy pork dumpling. Juicy pork dumpling. Yes. Xiaolongbao. 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 Let's say we have to press this doll into a circle. If we press here, outside of the skin gonna be very thin. Ah, uh, okay, I, that makes sense. This is much harder than making bread at home or any kind of pastry that I've ever made before. Yay! So first we've done the rolling and the next step is putting some pork in and we're gonna wrap it up in the 18 folds. We're gonna try. You have to put your fingers stand like this, and uh, your thumb have to crush like this. See, that looks so perfect. I never would have guessed that you had to be so exact when you're making something like this. I would have thought you just put a little bit in and go with it. Not like this. You have to do like this. Okay. Chef, wrong. <laughs> okay. How long does it take for somebody to be trained in this before you would let him start to work on dumplings for the restaurant? Yes. Having three months to half a year. Wow. See, if we didn't see his though, Natalie, I think we'd be impressed with what we've done. Yeah. It's just when we see what we should be doing. Okay. So the cooking class didn't go that well in terms of our ability, but we're going to try some of the chef's dumplings now. This Thank is you. your juicy pork dumplings. Yummy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These don't look like the ones that we made. <laughs> These look perfect. The rain followed us as we headed back into the Taiwanese countryside, but at least it gave me a chance to look my best. As well as this being a fantastic venue for any large outdoor gala event, the Chiang Kai-shen Memorial Center is a must-see for any tourist coming to Taipei. I've come to experience the stunning views in the Nihama National Park. As you can see, I've probably chosen a slightly odd day to come here, but I think a lot of this fog is due to the geothermal activity that's going on behind me. The good news is that that means there's a hot spring nearby and I'm going to go try it out. I've just finished my hot spring thermal spa experience. I give it two big thumbs up. I'm feeling really relaxed now, so I'm ready for a quick bite to eat, and then I'm gonna hit the night markets. I mean, I definitely try some of it, but it's something that totally unused to. I don't recognize almost anything here. Okay, no, I lie. I, I recognize this. I recognize peanuts. 
And these things look yum. They're obviously strawberries dipped in some kind of sugar. And they're not as big into sweet food here. So when you see something that's sweet, it's kind of cool. Okay, so what's this one here that he's making? So this is called oyster omelette. So you can see he's make, uh, putting all the oysters on the pan and he's going to... <laughs> wow! He's making four or five, seven at a time. One, two, three, four, seven. Oh, seven. One, two, three, this is obviously another yeah. one of the really popular stands here. Yeah, there are seven of it. Okay, this is where he does the flip over thing that we need to be careful of. Yeah. <laughs> so everything goes really, really fast. And then he puts lettuce on top. Yes, yes. Maybe for balancing your nutrition. Yeah, so you get a little bit of healthiness in there. I'm just impressed at the skill. Yes. Yeah, and no pressure when we're watching and filming at the same time. He's no problem with that. Easy. <laughs> this is one of the ones that you go for a lot when you come to this market. Yes. Yeah. And the squid, dry fried chicken, and uh, sticky dough, of course, and finish up with the bubble tea. With the bubble tea, which we're going to try out next. Yes. Cool. Count. And there he goes again. <laughs> And keep doing it until um, 3 o'clock in the morning. My God. So we are approaching the bubble tea place. I always order the half sugar and half ice. That's what I'm going for too. Let's get two of those. <laughs> cool. So that's what he's making up right now. Yes. Hey, Look at that thing he comes in. Yeah. That is the, the, the machine. She will do the shaking. shaking. So that is why the bubbles are formed. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you can see the bubbles here. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this. That is so cool. The bubble tea represents a, kind of another mix. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's yum. Good. Oh, I love it. Good. It's my new favorite trick. This tastes totally different from the one I told you I had. See? Totally different. See? Obviously, you have to get it in Taiwan. Yes. Yeah. I've arrived at the Wisteria Tea House. Manager Sophie is going to take us through a traditional tea ceremony with Chai Chin. It's gorgeous. Really fresh. You could smell it as soon as it was starting to be poured. This lovely fragrance. And then you smell the cup first. And then you pour the tea soap in this cup. And then you smell the cup again. Okay. And then you drink from this cup. Okay. The convention and exhibition industry is really in its infancy. We are capable of having a very good uh, uh, conventions held in each one of our cities and we also provide a very um, a friendly uh, hospitalities to the foreign uh, uh, people who come to Taiwan for conventions. Really, Taiwan is really the best place in the world, the very good place in the world to, to have meetings and conventions.